Hi, Redneck Computer Geek here. We're sitting with the Creality Falcon 2 Pro. Is it a thousand dollar toy or is it the next stage in being able to order your online pre-cut metal pieces from places like Send Cut Send, who I've worked with numerous times in the past. And actually, I used my 10 watt laser that I had before in order to be able to order parts from them. But this, this is the next step up. And tell me in the comment section below whether you think it's worth it. Now, granted, most people just are sitting here cutting out portraits of their better half, or their dog, or they're making Christmas tree ornaments with them in order to sell at some stupid crafty fair where people that don't know any better, any better they spend 20 to $30 for something that costs a dollar to make, and stuff like that. That's not what this video is about. If you want one of those videos, please feel free to look it up on YouTube. There are thousands of them. The other thing is, you get one of these laser cutters, and the first thing everybody is going to tell you is to go online and find a box making program and start making boxes. I will tell you that the addiction to doing this is real. I was 27 boxes in before I realized that I had lost it and had become addicted to making custom boxes. Yeah, the internet was not wrong. The making custom boxes in a heartbeat addiction is real. This is what my trays used to look like. This is what they're all getting converted over to look like now. Because this is some oddball, like, 11 and a quarter inches long by some weird 9 inches deep. And so, custom boxes. The internet was right. 27 boxes worth of addiction later. But, it's actually a really cool feature. Not a thousand dollars worth feature. But a very cool feature. Let me grab the camera and show you what the real actual cool feature is. The first big hurdle is the $600 extra for this setup. Now, we upgraded from a 10 watt, and I can clearly show you exactly what that difference is. With 10 watt, I was able to cut out things like cereal boxes. But if I tried to cut out something like, say, 3mm cardboard, well, usually I got through the first layer-ish. But, you upgrade to 22 watts, you can blast right through 3mm cardboard. You can blast right through 3mm plywood in seconds. And so you go from flimsy but usable to cardboard in an instant. Like, you can cut cardboard at, like, ten times as fast as you can cut plywood. So if you need a just quickie just to make sure it fits whatever, you can blast out free cardboard one right after another. Then if you want something that you can glue together, make sure you're positive, you've got plywood which takes amazing to Gorilla Glue. And then you take this, once you're positive about it, and you send it to Send, Cut, Send, and here you are with full metal weld on pieces. And the reason why this is such a big deal using this laser to be able to send stuff to Send, Cut, Send, is that originally what I was doing was I was 3D printing my parts and then I was test fitting my parts, and plus or minus, they mostly would fit. But what I started having to do was anything that was a drill hole, or anything that might have to interact, I had to actually deliberately design it so that I could drill it out to the perfect size. Because the plastic would shift, it would shrink, it would expand. It was not exactly perfect. On the other hand here, 
This is from Send Cut Send. This is a piece that was done on this laser printer. Laser cutter, I mean. And as you can see, it is without question perfect. Now, I ordered this months ago. I designed this on a 3D printer. That should have fit onto a shifting knob on a transmission. In plastic, that was perfect. It all fit. But in laser cut, both of these ended up proving that I had designed that too big. If I had have been able to do the plywood laser cutting, I never would have ended up ordering $40 worth of laser cut parts that don't fit anything. Now, luckily, I can slice these off and use these adjuster bars on other projects. But as far as what I designed them for, they're worthless until I can fix this. The other thing is, is a laser cutter, even just a regular 10 watt, will allow you to etch. This is done with a 10 watt at full throttle. And this is done with a 10 watt at full throttle, just by putting some permanent marker on stuff. So you can etch the part and then go cut it out with your plasma cutter, go cut it out with a saw, go cut it out with whatever. That's the big deal about all of this. Like I've done head gaskets where I needed head gaskets that were copper and I literally could not find them in copper. So I bought copper off of Amazon, permanent markered all over the top of it, made my own file using cereal boxes, etched it, and went out and cut it and called it good. Once I was positive that they were functional, I then sent off the files to Send Cut Send, and now instead of $35 per head gasket bought by aftermarket places, I spend a grand total of $8.50 each, and I buy four of them for the cost of one at most places for go-kart parts. That's the big thing about this laser, is that, yes, it is $600 more, but already, if I had been able to prototype into 3mm plywood, I would have saved myself $40 worth of parts that were wrong. The other thing is, is this stuff is dirt cheap. Like, it's almost an eighth of an inch, and if you stack them, then you've got quarter inch, and it glues together amazingly well, and you're going to end up with tons of scrap to be able to glue together. And there are tons of free ways to get templates for things to glue. Like, we found this Mustang template with glue-on tires and stuff. Let's get into the other elephant in the room when it comes to this kind of thing. Software. Now, most companies will attempt to wedge you into some form of paid-for software. One thing I actually liked, and the reason why I work with this unit, is that they actually openly supported being able to work with free laser cutting software. The problem with that is nobody seems to nobody seems to show or explain that in order to use free to do one of these, you basically got to do a translation to a translation to a translation. So if you use Onshape, which is free, you can design a file, but Onshape will not allow you to export into an SVG file. So what you end up having to do is export as a DXF for that to be put into Inkscape to use Inkscape to lay out the file to be able to export it in order to be able to use the free laser cutting software to be able to cut your part. It's complicated the first couple of times you go through it, 
But if you organize everything so that it's just download, import, move the pick around to where it needs to be, export, have a file that you export to, your laser cutting goes to that file, it actually goes really quickly once you get used to it. Um, it took me... I'm an ex-computer tech, so take that wherever it is that you want to put it, but it took me roughly about two days worth of monkeying around to get comfortable to the point that I could take it from a designed file on Onshape to cutting on the laser in under probably 15 minutes. Once you get to a certain point, it's just click, click, click out of habit. There's my real big thing about this laser cutting stuff is most of it is gimmick. Most of it is make a bunch of ornaments that you can go sell to a bunch of people that don't know any better and make a bunch of money off of people that are whatever. Go make a couple of pictures of people's deceased dog or their, their hubby that died years ago laser etched onto a piece of wood from the tree that they kissed under his children or some something like that is what most laser cutting videos are about this is about the reality of using it for a real purpose and i hope this was helpful to you anyways at this point, I gotta go get a mower ready for racing on Saturday. I need to get my van ready for a couple other things, both of which have parts that were designed using this laser cutting setup. Have a good day, and I hope this was helpful.